2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm in verse 11 now. You've known my persecutions, afflictions, which came to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yes, yes. Mm. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation and faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for Direction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God or the man or woman of God, since the, since the case here is neutered, uh, may be perfect, that is, matured, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I want to hinge uh, our, our conversation today. Uh, and, and I think it might end up being a conversation from verse number 11. But out of all that, all the Lord delivered in me. Yes. I want to look at the Lord's deliverance. The Lord's deliverance. Our Father, we need you today. Yes, yes, Lord. And I particularly need you today. Yes, Father. More than other days. Because today, Lord, admittedly, my body is weak. So I need your spirit to stand up in me. And be for me what I cannot be for myself. Yes, I thank you now for the power of the Holy Spirit yes. that is going to minister to the people of God. And we pray, Lord, that we, are, that we from this moment forward Hallelujah. will not just merely hear some halfway decent sermonizing, but that we have heard the voice of God. We are waiting. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us that we may live ever closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <coughs> the books of 1st and 2nd Timothy and the book of Titus wrap themselves together to become what we know as pastoral epistles. If you want to know what church leadership should be, then I would encourage you to read through and understand the books of 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. If you fancy yourself an apostle, I think you should read 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus to get a real good definition of what an apostle should be. If you fancy yourself a bishop, then I think you should read those books and find out what a bishop is supposed to be. Yes, supposed to be. And then fashion yourself accordingly. If you want to know what it is to be an elder in the house of the Lord, I suggest you read 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus so that you will know how to carry yourself in the house of God. If you want to know what your bishop ought to be doing, for those of us who are not called to any of those offices, but we want to know what that guy up there should be doing, 
and what examples we should be following. Those examples are laid out for us in First Timothy, Second Timothy. The narrative, the narrative, he does not, uh, some commenters give these books problems because to be a pastoral epistle, they don't spend a lot of time breaking down doctrine and discussing the teachings of the Lord. But if you want to know what those things are, then I suggest you read the Gospels, right? so that you can understand what the Lord actually taught. Yes. Uh, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is maddening that you can stand in churches uh, Sunday after Sunday and hear people talk about what they think the Lord taught. It is another thing to have the blessedness of your own to sit in your own home and under your own roof and in your own, with your own cup of tea and hear what the Lord is actually teaching. Many of us, many of us try to stitch together doctrine by, uh, by using one scripture here and one over there and another one around the corner to try and bring commonality to the scriptures and sometimes that doesn't make sense to the common man but what does make sense to the common man is if you will sit and simply read don't try to understand it just read and understand what you can understand you'll be able to pull some common threads all the way through the scriptural narrative mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. When you when you open the book of the Old Testament, I don't mean to go back this far, but when you come when you when you peel open the onion of the Old Testament, mm -hmm. you'll find that little thread where somebody fell from the grace of God and committed sin. Come on, come on. And then you pull on that sin thread, and Cain killed Abel, and pull on it some more. Until there was, until the, the, the Bible says that the imaginations of men were evil uh, from their youth. And God had to destroy all of mankind by water. But pull on that thread a little more and Nimrod sees that he wants to build a tower to God. Pull on the thread some more. Until they're standing at the base of a mountain and saying, We want to hear the voice of God. And God thunders from the mountain. And Moses comes down from the mountain, his face shining. They said, Here, put this bag over your head because we don't want to look at you, we're scared of you. You talk to God. Let God talk to you. You talk to us. And that'll be it. Pull on the thread a little more. Pull on the sin thread a little more. And you'll see that people have gone their own way so badly that the kingdom of Israel is now split in two. Ten nations go one way and two go another. Pull on it a little more. And you'll find that men have sinned against God so badly that God is now using the army of Assyria to, to, to wipe out the ten nations of Israel. Pull on the thread some more. Come on now, come on. And you'll find that God has to use his servant Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar was the servant of God Come on. to exact judgment upon the people of God in the two nations that God had left. Some 250 years after, the, after Israel went into captivity, so did Judah follow them into captivity. Pull on the frail a little more. Pull on the frail a little more. And 70 years have gone by and 
the prophets are now saying, it's time for us to go back and become a nation unto ourselves, but there is no nation. Pull on the thread a little more. Yeah, yeah. Come on, and you get to the book of Malachi where sin has gotten so bad that there is no voice left. There are 433 years that pass by and God has not spoken unto his people. Pull on the thread. Oh, 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 and sin is such a problem that the Bible says in due time, God, in due season, uh, and out of due time, when the fullness of time was come, God manifested himself in the form of sinful flesh that he might condemn sin in the flesh, that all the men might be set free by the sacrifice of Jesus the Christ of God. Here. 
book is here for our instruction, for our for doctrine, for reproof and instruction in righteousness. I know that. But I don't trust the pages. I don't, I don't trust in the book as it is. I trust in yes. Jesus. Yes. And if Jesus is backing up the words, then I trust them. All right. I trust in the God of the book. Yes. I trust in the Jesus that 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 communicated its message. Yes. It is not the doctrines that necessarily give me the strength that I need. Right. Even without the book, yes. I need to be able to go to God and talk to God in prayer and have God answer me whenever right. I'm in trouble. Right. That's right. I I wonder. Sometimes, depending on who's teaching you, the doctrine can be rather punitive. The doctrine can, can put you in, uh, you got judgment preachers that make you feel like you're going to hell every week, right? And you can sit under these kinds of teachings for long periods of time, but the, but the object of the gospel is not to acquaint you with the message, it is to acquaint you with the person. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I want you to get to know Jesus. That's right. I want you to get to know Jesus through the narrative of the gospel. The gospel narrative is the tool that I use to get you to know who Jesus is. If you are here to quote a bunch of scriptures, we missed it. Yes, sir. My God. Yes, sir. If you don't ever know how to quote scripture, but you know Jesus, yes. we succeeded. Yes. Yes. For the object is to know him. So, now, we get through, we're through the Gospels now, we're in the book of Acts where the apostles go about doing what Jesus said to do. Yes. And the apostle Paul goes about establishing uh, churches from chapters 11 to the end of the book. So half of the book is Peter's ministry, the next half is the ministry of the Apostle Paul. And he is going about in Lystra and Iconium and, and Antioch, establishing churches and establishing elders in every city. And he confirms by letter and by presence the books of Romans, Ephesians, uh, First and Second Corinthians, uh, Galatians, well, and, uh, First and Second Romans, Romans, First and Second Corinthians, those books really try to help the church stabilize itself. Mm -hmm. Some of it is about doctrine and a, and a lot of it is about church behavior and how you ought to carry yourself yeah. in the house of God. And then you get to uh, Galatians and Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and all of that is straight doctrine. So by the time you get to First and Second Timothy, if you don't have the doctrine by now, There is no reason why you shouldn't, right? <laughs> because he spent a lot of time. Yes. He spent a lot of time and a lot of effort talking about the doctrine. So now we enter First and Second Timothy. Mm -hmm. These books were written between 65 and 67 A.D. The Apostle Paul received his call to the ministry in about, in about 34. So we have, a, we have a man sitting. Paul's ministry lasted about 32 years. The Apostle Paul spent 32 years traveling from place to place, establishing churches and establishing elders in every city. And getting back in contact with those elders to see how the work of the church is going on. And some churches not doing so good. Other churches are doing really good. Some churches have a lot of money and some churches don't have any. And so Paul is trying to get the churches that have a lot of money to give some money to the churches that don't have a lot of money so they can, so they can keep things going. And at the same time, Paul's got to deal with, with Jews that are now telling Christians that they've got to do Jewish stuff in order to maintain their Christianity. And Paul's got to deal with people who are now saying that Jesus was actually some kind of a spirit. That's Gnosticism. That Jesus was, some, was actually some kind of a spirit and not an actual person. He's got to deal with that. But he says to Timothy, he says, 
says, in the last two years of his life. In the last two years of his life, Paul writes to Timothy, and if you're going to get something out of the book of 1st and 2nd Timothy, you have to put yourself in this place. Yes. If I were going to write a letter to my son yes. about my life's work come on, come on, come on. and what I want you to do with my life's work, yes. because I realize I don't have long to live. So with my last breath, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pen to paper and I'm going to let you know what I want you to do. He tells Timothy, in this verse anyway, he tells him a whole lot of things, but in this verse, he tells him a whole lot of things are going are to happen. In chapter 3, he opens the first four verses and he says that a disposition, uh -huh. a group of dispositions, is going to take over the age before the coming of the Lord. Those dispositions are going to be the men are going to be, he said, covetous, boasters. They're going to be proud. They're, this is going to describe the age. They're going to be blasphemers and disobedient to parents and unfaithful and unholy without natural affection, truth breakers and false accusers, incontinent, fierce people, despisers of those things that are good, training, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God and having a form of godliness, denying the power thereof, and he says, from such of those kinds of people that are push them to the other side, you don't have time to deal with them. It is a description of the disposition of the age. Yes. It does not have to be your disposition. Come on. I'm in the pastoral epistle, yes. y'all. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the pastor is sitting over there, but I'm in the pastoral epistle, so come it's going to be what it's going to be. Yes. Come on, come on. <laughs> you have not learned that disposition because you seen me live the last 32 years you seen me live the doctrine you know my manner of life you know the example that I put in front of you you know what my purpose is Paul's declaration was follow me as I follow Christ So I was trying to follow Christ all these years. Mm -hmm. And you were following me. All right. If you are following me and I am following him, when I die, you got to follow him. All right, that's right. Because you can't follow me no more. All right. But you have known yes, yes, yes. my matter of life and how I live my life. And I want you to live your life the same way I lived my life. Take that lesson from me and live it up. You know what kind of persecutions I've had to deal with. You know what kind of afflictions I've had to deal with. And let me tell you that you don't have to be the great, be the great apostle Paul in order to deal with afflictions. You don't have to be the great apostle Paul to deal with persecutions. All you have to do is live godly in Christ Jesus and be saved. Be comfortable. <clears throat> when you have 
religion. It is about rules. It is about systems. Yes. You're I'm always looking for something to change in order to make it better. Yes. It's subject. It's subject to uh, the whim of the elders' board. It is subject to the whim of the bishop's directives. It is subject to the whim of the calling of the people. Something about our religion has to change, or it does not change at all. It does not. Uh, it does not move at all. It's, it's always the same mm. thing. It's always the same set of rules all the time. We're always looking for what God wants from me and looking for uh, rule number one and rule number two and rule number three. May I suggest to you that we had 4,000 years of rule number one and rule number two and that did not work. Right. Hmm. Come on, come on. We had 4,000 years of people trying to follow the Ten Commandments as best they could. And you know what they did with it? They took Ten Commandments, turned them into 637. Jesus. They made it so difficult that nobody can walk with God. Hmm. What we need is a relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. When you make Jesus the focus, the centerpiece, and the object of your faith, it does not matter what rule gets broken today or tomorrow as long as I ain't going nowhere and as long as Jesus ain't going nowhere, it'll be all right at yes. once. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. The judgments that people place on other people become irrelevant because the rules don't really matter. What matters is my relationship with Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus. The Lord delivers out of Amen. all. about that one. Because Paul said, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. This he writes from jail.
And that lowered her standard of living. Now, if my mother grows up with a lower standard of living than her mother had, well, thank God somebody told me All right. so that I realized that our family is not cursed. It's just something that happened. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Now, we are free to educate ourselves, and yes. we're free to do, yes. and we're free to, to have more than our parents had. Yes. We can end that curse in our own lives. Yes. Because it was just a couple of decisions that happened. Come on. And it landed us in the situation as a family. Yes. But the transition, you have to transition out of the poverty, right? That's right, that's right. Even still existing in the poverty. Right. Realizing, yes. wait a minute. Come on. I'm free from this. Free. Uh, oh. I don't have to have an impoverished mindset. Woo. I don't have to think in terms of, of, of not having enough or, or trying to spend everything I get. I can actually start thinking about my life in a completely different way because I am free from the bondage of generational poverty. Come on, come on, come on. My future does not have to be my family's past. Come on, come on. Because out of them all,